Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we'll be making a part two for the charting aspect of Disney, and we're going to be more focused on the short term uh, outlook for Disney. What could transpire over the next couple of weeks, months, six months, years, etc. Now, in the last charting video, I went over a majority of the of the history of Walt Disney, but there was still a lot of information that I felt was left out, and that is the reason why I'm making a part two video on the charting. And I think you're going to like what we have in store for you today. We're going to focus majority on our middle assumption right here, what I added to my watch list right here. You can see it added to my watch list to notify me under 99.15. But before we hop into the chart, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in Walt Disney. I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. I do hold it in my VT index, Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index, uh, but that is not an individual holding. I'm not looking to persuade somebody into potentially buying or selling the stock. I'm just stating my opinion. Okay, so hopping over to the chart. Here I have my chart set up and all I do I have the red lines representing the gaps up on the way up on this most recent run and then I have three gaps to the upside where we gapped down. So I have those three identified and then I have these gaps identified on the upside. So first what we're going to do in this video we're going to monitor this trend line. Now if I zoom into this downtrend right here that we had set from our previous video you can see we gap down today right to the top of that downtrend. Now what a coincidence guys. I just put the video out yesterday and I had mentioned that I would be careful playing around with this downtrend and sure enough we gap down to the top of it. Coincidence? I, I don't know. But we're going to hop to a 15 minute chart and we're going to look at what's transpired for when we came in direct contact. Now let's not forget this was earnings. They posted earnings after hours so they gapped up and we seen clear rejection initially off of this downtrend. Now we have some sell off but ultimately we pushed that downtrend full green engulfing candle and we are getting buying pressure from the top end of it. You see how these wicks are pushing down to the top of that downtrend and we get a nice little extension right there. But ultimately we trade back down. We try to set this double bottom on top of my downtrend again. But what do I see? I see a, a high, a lower high, another lower high. And look at where we close yesterday's candle at. This is not a this is not a bullish candle by any means when it closes the day. And we gap down pretty much right at my downtrend. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that, that's just baffling to me. <clears throat> Excuse me, voice correct. But nonetheless, that's not what I wanted to make the video over today. We're going to hop back over to a day chart. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we get back on top of this downtrend. We go fill a couple of these gaps. Maybe and push to this longer term downtrend. I don't know. <clears throat> like I said, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just stating my opinion right here. But this is kind of the stuff that I'm looking at. Now, also with this gap down today, if I pull my commodity channel up, we have an exit of my commodity channel. You are going to have sellers directly based off of this commodity channel. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but the exit of the commodity channel exiting the overbought area, it, it's tough to find buyers when you're getting an exit. Same way when you're exiting the oversold. You're going to have buyers come in simply for exiting this oversold. I know it sounds crazy, but that is why I always have a commodity channel index on my chart. But let's, let's, let's uh, get to the point of this video. We're focused on this 99.15 where I added it to my watch list. So let's go find where 99.15 is at. Zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to use a horizontal yellow line for this 99.15. 99.15. Okay, so we're at 99.10 right there. Now, I could play around with that and use 100 flat, but do I see anything here that would lead me to potentially starting a position for Walt Disney? Right here, we have a gap up that was never filled, 
call I'm calling this a potential buying window. Does that mean that is going to be a guaranteed green trade if you take this trade? No, it does not mean that. But I'm definitely identifying that 9915 and I have this gap up right here. Now what else do I see that's very interesting about this red candle? Now I'm zoomed directly in off this red candle. On July 19th, hey, my birthday. On July 19th, we gap up now we attempt to fill it at the beginning of the day but this gap never got filled now if I were to just put a, a line over top of this gap right there you see how on this red candle right there we fill that gap on the money gaps up the next day and we have just been pretty much bullish ever since is that a coincidence now like I said it's not guaranteed like we were getting an exit of the commodity channel at the same time that we filled this gap see a lot of stuff can always be misleading but you have to understand what's going through traders minds simple supply and demand right here when we filled this gap was there more demand or more supply simple supply and demand if more people want to buy than sell the price of the stocks gonna go up and right here more people wanted to buy than sell now also let's take off that line that we put right there and let's mark our uptrend short term so from our bottom right here now you can see exit of the commodity channel at the same time as that this would have been great shares bought right there but let's not let's not get off track here is our uptrend of the stock this is still an uptrend could we potentially uh, get volume or get demand off this what also do I see that's matching up right here on this day we gap up I'm gonna to want to identify that right there I didn't have it in there right there but I know the color is off I'll switch that to red is it possible that we meet in with this gap fill at 117.63 right off my trend line and we continue going bullish and try to attempt to fill some of these gaps yes it is possible this is why uh, nothing is a sure thing when you're when you're marking out indicators on a chart it's just identifying them and watching what is the supply and demand when this time officially comes but I'm telling you right now if we trade underneath of this gap fill and we start filling this gap here we that's a crack of the trend line and we're gonna come attempt to fill these gaps I don't I don't care what what they what news comes out I, I don't care it's going to attempt to come fill this gap if the buyers buy it up during that time we might not fill the gap it's not guaranteed I don't have a crystal ball here guys I'm just I'm just showing you stuff that I'm looking at but nonetheless it's still got a nice uptrend nothing to panic about if you weren't able to sell right here I mean it's not the end of the world I mean this stock is ripped pretty good and we're still on an uptrend I mean it, it's impossible to tell what the future holds for this but nonetheless, I have my 99.15 marked. We have a gap fill. Now, if I was potentially thinking about starting a position, and this is where I want to do that, what am I going to do? I'm simply going to buy one single share, a tracker share, and we're going to see how it transpires. I'm not going to rush into any individual position. Now, my long-term outlook for filling out the position is to eventually get this position to about 3% of my portfolio. I don't want any single holding to be a majority of my portfolio that could potentially uh, set me in the wrong direction. I don't want to set my entire net wealth, my entire net wealth in the hands of one individual company. That is not what I'm trying to preach. That is why I preach Boglehead investing, I know you haven't heard me say it yet, but it's basically holding majority of your money in broadly diversified index funds because not one individual company can make or break you. So going to what could transpire. So let's say I get triggered in off of this gap fill and I get my one tracker share and the price just keeps falling. Okay, I might add a couple more shares off this next gap. Do I like the value of the company at 95? It's under my middle assumptions. I think it's reasonable for Disney to put these numbers up. Yeah, I might add a couple shares off of that. Now, let's say we just keep on falling. My next mark on the chart is 91.84. Do I like the value of the company at 91.84? Yes, I do like the value. I might add a couple more shares, continue upping that percentage of my portfolio up to that 3%. Now, where now 
What say Disney puts up these low assumptions? I'm already showing you guys that it's possible for Disney to come down and potentially trade at 55. Who knows? So let's say Disney were to come down and trade at 55. When we're down at 55, I want my total positioning for my portfolio in Disney to be around 3%. 3%. Nothing more. And I'm just going to let it ride. Because I'm confident that the company is going to produce the numbers that I'm projecting based off of my analysis through the entire reliable Rudy process. Now, more specifically, let's say we trade underneath this low that we put in around 90 flat. Now I gotta go to the left of my chart. Is there anything else to the left of my chart that looks alarming? Now I see we have this gap up right here. I'm going to mark that gap. So we get our tracker share. Basically off 100 flat, this gap fill. My middle assumption. We add a few here, we add a few here, and it just keeps dropping. Nothing to worry about, guys. This is a small position that, we've, that we're building out right now. We're not rushing into any position. But where am I going to be interested after that? The next thing in my chart I have is 85 bucks, And I can run this all the way down to 55 my middle assumptions because I'm confident in each share that I get is going to annually bring in 15%. If I believe these numbers, that's what you have to ask yourself. Do you believe that this company can put up these numbers? We are getting a little bit on the longer side. I hope you guys uh, enjoy the content in this video, and I and I go a little bit more in depth of how I personally fill out a position. But that is what I see for Disney. I'm interested down here, so I'm going to be patient. And if that day never comes, okay, I have it in my VT Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index Fund. I'm going to benefit anyways. It's a win-win scenario. I do not care what happens with this. Like I said, I have nothing to gain here. But it is going to be interesting to see how it plays out over the course of the next couple months, maybe even a year or two. And, yeah, I'll leave it at that. We'll see you guys on the next video.